Off a girl was sexually assaulted on her way to school, and tonight a witness says that he saw the attacker with the child. We've got the exclusive interview. That attack has left parents and kids on alert tonight. Find out what you can do to protect your children. But first, local teachers were suspended. Then they filed a lawsuit. Now, two days later, the school board has a major change of heart. Good evening, everyone. Surprising developments tonight in that case of alleged improper touching at a Virginia Beach school. The teachers who were suspended now have their jobs back at Corporate Landing Elementary School. After being accused of forcing a third grader to rub their backs, these six PE instructors were first placed on administrative leave, transferred to other schools, then suspended for one week without pay. Now all of those things have been reversed two days after they filed the lawsuit against the school board. They decided that a mistake had been made and these teachers will be back at Corporate Landing tomorrow where they should be all along and it will not be necessary to go to court on Friday. Hear from the teachers involved and hear what students have to say tonight on Wavy News 10 at 6. On other news, the search continues for a child predator in Norfolk. This after an 11-year-old girl was snatched on her way to school and sexually assaulted. It happened yesterday morning in the 2400 block of Collie Avenue. Beginning our team coverage is Wavy News 10. Stephen Lattimore live on Norfolk's Collie Avenue tonight. Stephen. Alveda, police tonight say they do not have anyone in custody, but they are looking for a suspect. They've released a composite sketch to give you an idea of what they're looking for. Now, this man is described as a black male, about 20 to 30 years old, with a large build between, he's about 5'9", with a dark complexion, he has acne and long yellow fingernails. Now, if you know the suspect or you know any information, the police would like you to give them a call. The number is 664-4040. Again, police tonight uh, have not arrested anyone, but they're still looking for that suspect. Alveda, back to you. All right, thanks a lot, Stephen. Now, as police continue to search for the suspect, parents and students return to their schedules this morning. But with an extra dose of caution, Wavy News 10, Cy Bolton picks up our team coverage with a morning trip to school. Like she has every morning for the last several years, Beverly Jones walks her daughter Christina to school, specifically to protect her against what happened Tuesday morning. I think it'll be a lot safer than to have young children, 11, uh, 12 year olds out here, 7, 7.30 in the morning getting to school. Because, you know, we've got all kinds of people out here. One of those people abducted an 11-year-old girl on her way to school and raped her next to this dumpster behind a supermarket. Bryce Westfall works across the street and saw the two together just before it happened. Well, he had his arm around her, and uh, and I took it that it was a, you know, a parent, you know, with his daughter, you know, walking How back. How was she home. reacting? Well, she was crying. This morning, police patrolled the neighborhood in marked and unmarked units. Kids walked to school in twos and threes. Parents lined up at the school to drop their kids off, all to prevent another child from becoming a victim. It's a sense of protection, I guess, and uh, I know they get to school safe. Must put an extra burden on you, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yes, it does, but I prefer that I know that she's at school safe. Today's temperatures might have been the most valuable deterrent to another assault. The morning's bitter temperatures not only put more school kids into buses and cars, it probably kept a vicious predator indoors, unable to repeat his attack. In Norfolk, I'm Cy Bolton, Waving News 10. Well, crime prevention officers say the best way to protect kids from attackers is to keep them from being a target. Officers tell Wavy News 10 and, and 10 on your side that there are several steps that you should go over with your children. First, make sure that kids never walk anywhere alone. They should always be with an adult or with friends. Use code words so if a stranger approaches your child, he'll have to know the secret word before your child will talk to him. Tell your child never to walk over to somebody in a stopped car. And if a stranger grabs your child, Tell your child to scream, kick, bite, and yell, you're not my mother or you're not my father. That will help a passerby realize that it's not a child just throwing a tantrum. At this hour, the House of Delegates is debating the much-anticipated cut on that car tax. Democrats and some rural Republicans want funding for school construction in addition to the cut on the car tax. But hardcore Republicans only want the car tax cut fulfilling Governor Jim Gilmore's campaign promise. The Republican-controlled Senate promises to defeat any bill with school construction on it. So coming up on Wavy News 10 at 530, political reporter Andy Fox tells us how all this will play out.
What started as a bank robbery has turned into an ongoing hostage situation in Washington state. And that tops news across the nation tonight. Police have blocked off traffic around the bank just outside of Seattle as negotiations begin with a gunman inside. Apparently those talks are somewhat successful so far. The bank robber has released one of the six people that he had taken hostage. A woman who just minutes before had a gun pointed at her head will keep you updated as the negotiations continue. Protecting your kids from adult shows on TV may soon be easier. The Federal Communications Commission is expected to adopt standards for the V-chip tomorrow. That chip would be installed in new TV sets and would also allow owners to block programs based on ratings. The new sets probably won't be in stores until next year. Preventing violence against women is the focus of new proposals unveiled today at the White House. President Clinton today joined Attorney General Janet Reno in calling for improved human rights for women worldwide. They're urging other countries to help prevent the kidnapping and trafficking of women. The president also marked today International Women's Day. Federal agents are getting a bird's eye view of the flood ravaged deep south today. The emergency management officials started their aerial tour over Elba, Alabama. That's where a levee broke this weekend and sunk the downtown area. Some 2,000 residents are still out of their homes tonight. Agents said plenty of money will be coming in to help repair the damage and also to prevent this type of thing from happening again. And just a little farther north, freezing temperatures are posing a real threat to Georgia's peach crop. Peaches need cold weather to produce fruit, but what they don't need is below freezing temperatures after they have begun to bloom. Georgia peach growers are worried that the next few days could bring the end of the 1998 crop. If that does happen, there will be fewer peaches in the stores and they'll be selling at much higher prices. Local strawberry farmers, well, like this one in Pongo, are suffering major damage last night. Frost killed most of the strawberry blooms and with more cold weather on the way, the outlook is not good. Agriculture agents say the wacky weather here could affect strawberry prices across the country, but it's not expected, though, to impact the annual strawberry festival in Pungo. That is slated for the end of May. Well, it is impacting other things here. We've got to put our coats back on. We've got to turn the heat back up. What's going on here? Well, it's, it's really amazingly cold out. Yes, it and is. And there's some Arctic air which has invaded the area. We've got one more punch of cold air yet to come. And ahead of that punch, we could see something else. We'll show that to you with the forecast. First of all, here's a look at earlier today, right down through the area. We have partly sunny skies, a little bit of thin cloudiness. This is as warm as it's gotten all day today. Norfolk with 38 degrees. Newport News reporting it with 37 degrees. The, the radar over the past 24 hours will show you what's been going on there if we could uh, and again be able to show you 24 hours ago we did have a few sprinkles roll on through the area nothing too awfully big what's all this green stuff out here off toward uh, western the extreme western tip of Virginia off into West Virginia there's a little bit of a low pressure system a little bit of a clipper type system rolling on through the area which could even give us a few flurries overnight tonight during the overnight hours that's how cold it is again nothing to get excited about in terms of any snowfall but again we could see a curiosity a few flurries rolling on through the area. In terms of cloud cover, be able to show you again mostly clear skies first part of the day. We have seen a few clouds roll on in uh, the latter part of the afternoon. Mostly high thin clouds. See a lot more cloudy to spill on over the mountains uh, with those flurries again a little bit later on. Visible imagery from sunrise this morning on up to the present time. Again, you can see some of these thin clouds rolling on through and again some of those snow showers, flurries really well on off to our west. National Weather Service Doppler radar out of Wakefield. Nothing much. Well, a few flurries on up toward northern Virginia and a few little patches the light flurries there. Let's have a look at Super Doppler 10, be able to show you what's going on there if we could. Uh, again, uh, nothing much, too awfully much in sight yet. I think later on tonight, toward midnight, we'll start to see a little bit of activity show up as some of these flurries move on into the region. Taking a look at our forecast, uh, where our forecast is coming from anyway. Overnight tonight, between 9 o'clock tonight on into Friday evening. Again, there's an upper level low which will be approaching the area and we'll start to see some cloud cover roll on in. Light northerly winds for the most part. Winds dying off for a while, but they'll pick back up. And again, some of these blue areas that we're seeing, those are areas of flurries. We could continue to see those overnight tonight. There's where we are tomorrow morning. We'll see our skies clear off by the looks of things, but a brisk north to northwesterly wind. There's where we are tomorrow night. Another little pop of cool air uh, off toward northern Virginia rolling on through, keeping our winds up. To uh, And there's where we are on Friday morning. We'll take you on into Friday evening. And again, we could still see a few scattered flurries roll on in off a storm system well on out to sea. Mostly cloudy. Again, a few flurries. Nothing 
to get excited about overnight 20 to 25. Winds picking back up again a little bit later on tonight. For tomorrow, sunny and cold, 38 to 40. A uh, brisk wind. Then tomorrow night, clear and cold again. Some of the coldest weather we've seen so far this winter. And then on into Friday, sunny skies, perhaps a couple of degrees warmer. So once again, we are looking at a few flurries, no. but that's not the big <laughs> thing. The big thing is it's going to be very, very cold again tonight. Well, the kids right. will be happy, yeah. even with a little bit. Yeah. All right. Whose okay. kids? <laughs> My kids. All right, All right, thanks. Time now to take a look at the Wavy Jam Cam with, well, pretty good weather, actually, traffic conditions everywhere yeah, and weather, too. so I've heard. Chrissy Russo is over at Metro Traffic. Chrissy, what's going on? Or what's not going on? Yeah, well, that's a good way to put it. Uh, what's not going on is a lot, especially at the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel. Steady traffic in both directions. Here's our first Jam Cam shot. This is 264 west of the interchange. You can see it's a little heavy there, uh, westbound, making way out of the downtown area through the construction. Next is 64 east. Well, this is a nice clear shot of uh, no Northampton Boulevard at the HOV gates. Uh, like I said, it's steady in both directions at the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel, though we do have some slowdowns on 64 east and westbound on the peninsula because of the new traffic patterns through the construction areas. At the Midtown and the Downtown Tunnels westbound, we've got heavy traffic from Norfolk into Portsmouth. All in all, everybody's on their best behavior this afternoon on your roadways. I'm Chrissy Russo. So, Metro Traffic Control, Wavy News 10 at 5. Chrissy, thank you. You know, dating can be exciting for teenagers, but it can also be dangerous. Find out what one group is doing to protect young people tonight on Wavy News 10 at 6. I'm Crystal Meacham at Norfolk Preparatory High School. Domestic violence is a growing problem, so counselors are arming these students with the information they need to keep from falling victim. I'll tell you all about it coming up tonight at 6. Up next, there are vitamins A, B, C, D, and even Mega E. How do you know which supplements are right for you? Find out after the break. You're watching Wavy News 10 at 5. With Alveda Ewell, Charles Pugh, Don Slater in the Super Doppler 10 Weather Center, and Bruce Waiters Sports. Coming up tomorrow on Wavy News 10 at 5, are you giving your sick child the right amount of medicine? Probably not if you're using over-the-counter treatments. Because these medications can have significant side effects, especially if they're not used properly. Find out how you can be sure your child gets the right dose tomorrow on Wavy News 10 at 5. You know, many of us turn to supplements to get the vitamins and minerals that we need, but that can be confusing because there's so many choices, including the new his and hers vitamins. Charles tells us what to look out for in health headlines. Charles? Well, Alvita, we already get what we need, the vitamins and minerals, naturally from the food we eat. But if you need to take a vitamin, you should really read those labels carefully. Now, a multivitamin is a good choice, but there are so many to choose from. Some megavitamins give you thousands of percent more than the recommended daily dose, and excessive amounts can do more harm than good. And what about his and hers vitamins? Men's requirements are a little higher for some vitamins and minerals. Calcium and iron are also important minerals for women to make sure that they consume adequate amounts of. And it's a good idea to let your doctor know what supplements you're taking to make sure that you are on the right track. Now, for the past month, we have been learning about heart health. And joining us now is your family doctor, Dr. David Mazel. And Dr. Mazel, among the lessons that we've learned today, exercise and changes in diet really are the things that we should uh, really key on. Charles, that's very true. And that's where your family doctor will want to start before resorting to new drugs to lower cholesterol. So tonight, practical advice from a local nutrition expert who says the best way to a healthy heart is to eat smart. This is what five pounds of solid dietary fat looks like, and some of us eat that much in one weekend. Meaning solid, stick to your ribs, to your walls, to the vessel of your, or of your bloodstream, fat. This is just one of the props and Terra Nutrition Specialist Sheila Cobb uses to teach heart patients, or anyone, how to eat better. The goal is to cut out the saturated fat. The trick, she says, don't try to cut too much too fast shouldn't feel so deprived or denied and even slightly depressed about the food choices you make. What's more important is to actually explore positive alternatives that are not so far-fetched from the diet that you enjoy. For poultry, if you must cook with the skin, then don't eat it. That's where most of the fat is. Many times you're looking at ground meats, you'll find that they contain as much as 25% or higher of their calories derived from fat. And the fat primarily is saturated solid fat. Look for lean beef with less than 12% fat. 
then strain it after cooking to drain out more. While shopping, spend more time in the fruit and vegetable aisles and read the labels. Your total fat content should be less than 30% of your daily calories. For women, that's 35 to 50 grams, 45 to 60 grams for men. The fat that you're eating in your diet can affect the um, types as well as the amounts of fat circulating in your bloodstream. If you'd like a nutrition specialist to speak to your organization, call 1-800-SENTERRA for more information. And one last tip from Sheila. Because it can be so hard to cut back on the ideal level of fat, try this trick. Take your current weight, divide it in half, then try to cut back to that many fat grams a day. That's not the ideal, but it is a way to get started. Charles, back to you. All right, doctor, it's so hard to put down those triple cheeseburgers. That's for sure. All right, thanks so much. Coming up tonight, a new procedure offers hope to children with a common heart defect. That story tonight in Medical Breakthroughs on Wavy News 10 at 11. And it is time now for tonight's student body question. Hello, I'm Deborah Natta Gathers from River Road Middle School. I'd like to know, by the year 2050, what will the life expectancy age be? 75, 85, or 95 years old? Thanks, Deborah Netta. Watch for the answer coming up in just a few minutes. That is a look at health headlines. <laughs> I can never say that word, Alvita. It's back to you. Take it away. One day, just keep practicing. <laughs> Thanks, will. Charles. Thanks. Well, students on a bus ride home had to think on their feet after the driver refused to make all the stops. Find out what one student did to prevent a major disaster tonight at 5.30. Up next, though, the members of Boys to Men have won yet another honor. Find out what this award has to do with their mothers after the break. You're watching the station on your side. This is Wavy News 10 at 5. They're live. They're everywhere. It's Wavy TV's Traffic Jam Cam. The nominees for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Drama Series are... Well, believe it or not, soap opera actress Susan Lucci must wait in anticipation once again this year Susan to Lucci see if she will win that elusive, and we must say elusive, Daytime Emmy Award. You know, the nominations were announced this morning in New York, and this will be Lucci's 18th try at the Best Lead <laughs> Actress Award. She portrays Erica Kane on ABC's All My Children, and she is up against some pretty tough competition this year, again, including Days of Our Lives actress Eileen Davidson. Days of Our Lives was also nominated for Best Show. Awards will be given out on May the 15th, right here on NBC. Yet another milestone for Boys to Men. The foursome has racked up their seventh platinum single with their latest hit, A Song for Mama. It's been certified as reaching the one million mark in sales by the Recording Industry Association of America. That gives the group the most platinum singles of any group since the association began certifying gold singles in 1958. Wow, good for them. Yes. Well, time for an early look at sports, and joining us here is TV10 Sports Director Bruce Rader. Now, Bruce, some good news for Hampton University basketball fans today, huh? That's right, Alvita. All season long, Hampton U basketball coach Steve Murfield has had the word interim attached to his title, but today it was removed. Dr. Dennis Thomas, the Director of Athletics at Hampton, announced that Steve is now the head basketball coach. He did an excellent job in moving the program forward this season. Murfield guided the Pirates to their first winning season in Division I, and an impressive third place finish in the MEAC with an 11 and 7 record. So, congratulations to Coach Steve Murfeld for a job well done. He's going to be around for a while. Meanwhile, it's been a tough season for Norfolk basketball star Joe Smith. He suffered through the Latrell Sprewell controversy while playing for the Golden State Warriors, but was relieved when he was traded a couple of weeks ago to the Philadelphia 76ers. Coming up tonight on Wavy News 10 at 6, TV 10's Chris Reckling visits with a former Mari High School star, and they talk about his new start in Philly. And coming up next on Wavy News 10 at 5.30, former U.S. Open champion Curtis Strange introduces us to the area's newest golf course. The Williamsburg star played nine holes at the Lynx at City Park in Portsmouth. Strange consulted for the designers on this project, which was the old nine-hole City Park course. Check it out on Wavy News 10 at 5.30. A busy day of sports ahead. I'm Bruce Rader. Don't go away. All right, Bruce. Thanks so much. Richmond lawmakers were discussing possible laws involving your child's daycare center today. Find out what they decided about adult to children ratios straight ahead in News Across Virginia. But first, tonight's student body answer by the year 2050, the life expectancy is it's estimated to be 85 years old.
you see it on the highways. It's everywhere. Wavy News 10's Traffic Jam Cam. Live, right from the highways you travel. Keeping an eye on Hampton Roads traffic, tunnel congestion, and highway headaches. If it happens on the interstate, you'll see it live right here on Wavy TV 10. Wavy News 10's Traffic Jam Cam. Watch for it live during daily traffic reports or wherever there's news to be seen on Hampton Roads highways. It's Traffic Jam Cam, only on the station on your side. Wavy TV 10. Three people are wounded in an early morning hostage situation near Roanoke. And that tops news across Virginia tonight. Police responded to a domestic violence call just before 9 this morning in Salem, Virginia. When the officers arrived at the door, the man fired a shot, grazing a police officer in the head. Now SWAT teams moved in and there was an exchange of gunfire. During the commotion, a woman and child managed to escape. The child and the gunman, however, were hit, but the extent of their injuries is not known. Legislation to write daycare staffing ratios into state law failed today. That bill would have required daycare centers to keep the current ratio of one staff member for every 10 children in the 2 to 4 age group. The state's Child Daycare Council wants to change it to one adult for every 15 kids. The Tanger Island Town Council has told Warner Brothers to find another place to shoot a movie. The mayor says the decision was based on the content of the script for Message in a Bottle, which contained scenes from, well, they had cursing and drinking and sex. The movie, which will star Kevin Costner and Paul Newman, was to start filming this spring. Wavy News 10 at 5.30 is straight ahead, but first, a check on the evening forecast. For that, we're going to go over to Don Slater in the Super Doppler 10 Weather Center. Don. Okay, taking a look at the daylight hours on a satellite picture. I want to show you where a little bit of weather is coming from overnight tonight. You will note this area right here amidst the snow on the ground. You know, some of these clouds aren't moving. Well, that's snow on the ground across much of the Midwest. This is what we're looking at, this little expanding area right through here. A little bit of a clipper-type system, which could provide a few flurries overnight tonight, but will provide, and again, oh, that's it, just a few few flurries. Not a real big deal. Nothing to call home to mom about. Uh, the biggest thing about this is going to be uh, the windy and colder weather that we'll see coming up for tomorrow. It will reinforce the shot of cold air that we obviously have over the area for right now. Uh, so again, this will approach a little bit later on tonight. A little bit different view. Be able to see some of the snow showers associated with it. Very, very light flurries for the most part. It'll be a real, real quick, light, to puffy flurries just kind of floating on through the area, uh, area uh, late, late tonight. So again, it shouldn't be a real big deal at all. In terms of cloud cover. We've got a few high thin clouds over the area for right now. The bulk of that precipitation and cloudiness is still off to our west. Might see uh, on the National Weather Service Doppler radar a few light flurries off to the north. Uh, let's have a quick look at Super Doppler 10, see if we can pick anything up there. Again, nothing much going on. Really, really pretty quiet weather in terms of any flurries for now. We could see some though uh, later on tonight. And again, just kind of a curiosity, especially in this unusually cold weather. Back to the computer. We'll have a look at temperatures across the region, 35 to 40 and really that's about as warm as it's gotten all day today. A little bit warmer here, but again, very, very cold off toward the mountains. Our forecast overnight tonight, 20 to 25, 20 inland, 25 along the coast, mostly cloudy, and we could see a flurry or two, nothing real big. For tomorrow, uh, rapid clearing and cold, 38 to 40 for a high again. Northwesterly winds rather brisk, 15 to 20 miles an hour for tomorrow. Tomorrow night, clear and cold, overnight low temperatures, 18 to 25. Now, it'll be a little bit colder with a lack of wind and the totally clear skies for tomorrow night. I think most of us around 20, 22 degrees uh, throughout the nighttime hours in the Hampton Roads area. And then for Friday, a little bit warmer, 40 to 45 degrees. Wavy News 10 at 530. We'll continue in just a moment. Stay with us. Just ahead on Wavy News 10 at 530. After a few minutes on their school bus, some Pennsylvania middle school students figured out there was something really wrong with their bus driver. We'll tell you what happened. Plus, there are now more state police patrolling the peninsula, but instead of fighting the bad guys, they're helping the good ones. And our top story tonight. The House is finally talking about cutting the car tax. Details straight ahead. Live from the station on your side, this is Wavy News 10. Good evening, I'm Charles Pugh and for Carolyn Castleberry, Virginia's new Republican governor promised to cut the car tax, but... Democrats want to build new schools. Les has more in tonight's top story. Les. Charles, there is only so much money, so which has priority? Well, here's where the car tax bill stands tonight. Governor Gilmore proposed $493 million to phase out the car tax in the next two-year budget. 
the Senate trimmed his proposal to $474 million. Then it shrunk again at the hands of the House, $447 million, with $376 million for school construction. Andy Fox joins us from the newsroom with what happened today. Now, Andy, I understand the House of Delegates is debating that bill. Yeah, that's right. They are taking up the matter for the very first time in the full session. And the sticking point is school construction. Republicans don't want school construction funding until the car tax cut is funded. But Democrats want a campaign issue in 1999, and they think they found it with school construction funding. As the doors begin closing on Speaker of the House Tom Moss and this year's General Assembly session, the House of Delegates is racing to complete the bill to cut the car tax. School construction is a, is a major problem uh, throughout Virginia. We've got to help the localities. Diamondstein and Democrats want school construction funding, period. Everything concerns me when it involves money. But Republican Senator John Chichester sponsored the bill to cut the car tax, and he opposes Democratic efforts to slap on an amendment to build new schools. I don't think you'll get very much in the end. I don't think the Senate is going to have an appetite for borrowing money. We're hoping that it passes and uh, uh, that the conferees will be of uh, uh, more cool heads will prevail and we can take one of the biggest needs we have in this state and take care of it. Once the House bill passes, it goes back to the Senate. Wavy News 10 has learned Senate Republicans will defeat the House bill, sending it to a conference committee to work out the details. I don't think the Senate will have an appetite for it, and then it ultimately go into conference is, not, is one of the alternatives. Democrats predict there will be something for everyone. Everybody promised car tax. You're going to get car tax. You're going to get uh, school construction. There may be a little relief on food, uh, sales tax on food. Don't expect any cut in the sales tax on food, I'm told. The House debate goes on at this hour. Again, our sources say the House will send the Senate a car tax cut and school construction funding. The Senate will reject the school construction funding, sending it to committee to iron out the differences. A final vote will probably come late Friday or Saturday, the last day of the General Assembly. We'll certainly be there. Les, back to you. Take it right down to the wire. Andy, thanks. The car tax debate is the topic of our Contact 10 segment tonight. Would you rather have your tax money spent on getting rid of the car tax, or would you like to see it go for school construction? We'll take your calls in a few minutes. Charles? All right, thanks, Les. Good financial news from the General Assembly tonight for one of Virginia's largest private employers. Now, in order to make it more competitive in building nuclear carriers, Nuclear New Shipbuilding received an $8 million credit in this year's budget negotiations. The House has approved a similar bill, and now it must be signed by Governor Jim Gilmore. We'll have more on this story tonight on Wavy News 10 at 11. Well, you may not have noticed it, but there are fewer sailors in Hampton Roads than there used to be. A recent Navy study shows that the number of active duty personnel has dropped in the past fiscal year. Right now, there are about 82,000 military personnel in the area. That's 5,500 people fewer than last year, and that's the lowest level since 1974. Now, fortunately, the decrease has not significantly hurt our economy because there's been an increase in spending for goods and services. President Clinton is not saying if he'll testify before the Monica Lewinsky grand jury. Now, senior advisors say the president's attorneys are talking to Kenneth Starr's office about the possibility of the president testifying, but it's not known if he'd answered the grand jury's questions on tape or in person. If Clinton does testify, it will probably be after Lewinsky does. The U.N. agreement with Iraq is a done deal, but critics say it's a sellout. President Clinton disagrees, and today he defended U.N. Secretary General Kofi Annan's deal with Iraq during his visit to the White House. Iraq is now letting U.N. weapons inspections teams into presidential and other confidential sites. The last six days is not the same as the next six months, but it's, it's all very hopeful, and the Secretary General deserves a lot of... Uh, appreciation from the United States and from all Americans for the work that has been done. Yesterday, a U.S.-led team wrapped up inspections of eight sites that the Iraqis had previously placed off-limits. A jury is now deliberating the fate of Sergeant Major Gene McKinney. The Army's former top enlisted man faces 19 counts of sexual misconduct. In closing arguments yesterday, prosecutors described McKinney as a liar who abused his power to pressure women for sex. But the defense said McKinney was framed by his accusers. Unlike a civilian trial, the jury verdict in a court-martial does not have to be unanimous, but at least six of the eight jurors would have to vote guilty to convict McKinney. And meanwhile, a sergeant in Fort Bragg, North Carolina, is being court-martialed for allegedly harassing male soldiers. Four men reportedly told a military judge that Irving Myers wanted them to perform sexual acts with 
them in exchange for money. The sergeant says that he is innocent. The Navy, Army, and Air Force want men and women to train together. The three services are reportedly rejecting the recommendation to separate the sexes during basic training. They say co-ed training is better preparation for military life since women now sail on warships and fly combat planes with men. The services will make their formal recommendation next week, but Defense Secretary William Cohen will make the final decision. Air traffic controllers tracking Air Force One lost sight of the president's plane yesterday and dropped off the radar screen for about 24 seconds. Controllers blame the radar problems on their new long-range radar tracking system, which has been taken offline before for repeatedly losing aircraft. Officials say there were no other planes in the area and the safety of the people aboard Air Force One was never compromised. A Pennsylvania school bus driver is facing drunk driving charges after taking middle school students on a wild bus ride. The students said the driver kept passing stops on the route and would not let them off. They tried to get the attention of the people on the street and one of the students even grabbed the two-way radio on the bus to call for help. Police eventually pulled the bus over and arrested the driver. Retaliation turns into violent action in the West Bank today. That tops news around the world this hour. Yesterday, three Palestinian construction workers were killed at a roadblock in Hebron. Today, angry Palestinians retaliated by throwing stones and firebombs at Israeli soldiers. They, in turn, fired rubber bullets at the demonstrators. At least 32 Palestinians were wounded. The new UN commissioner responsible for inspecting Saddam Hussein's presidential sites arrived in Baghdad today. Inspections are expected to begin within two weeks. A special group of diplomats will accompany UN inspectors in searching sensitive sites in Iraq, but the new accord excludes U.S. and British diplomats from escorting the arms inspectors. A U.S. federal judge has ordered Iran's government to pay a New Jersey couple almost $250 million. Their daughter was killed in a terrorist bombing in the Gaza Strip in 1995. The family's lawyer argued the responsible group was financed by Iran. This is believed to be the first time U.S. citizens have been awarded punitive damages against a foreign nation accused of sponsoring terrorism. But back at school tomorrow morning. <laughs> and just why are these women celebrating? Well, these are the teachers accused in that back rub scandal at Corporate Landing. And it appears the controversy may be over. I'm Charles Pugh, and I'll have the full story tonight on Wavy News 10 at 6. Plus, state police are stepping up patrols on the interstates, but they're not looking for people breaking laws. They want to find the innocent people. Details after a break. You're watching Wavy News 10 at 5.30. With Les Smith, Carolyn Castleberry, Don Slater in the Super Doppler 10 Weather Center, and Bruce Rader's Sports. The story just in moments ago, the House of Delegates voted 100 to nothing to send the car tax bill back to the Senate. That version has $447 million for cutting the car tax and $376 million for school construction. As Andy Fox told us, the Senate will defeat that bill and sending the matter to a conference committee, which will then iron out the differences. And it just keeps on going. Here it is. Well, stranded motorists, hold on tight. Help is on the way. A state police motor assistance program has recently expanded its services to the peninsula. Steve Kearns rode along with the new motor assistance crew today and joins us live from Interstate 64 in Hampton. Hi, Steve. Hi, Les. Have you ever seen a car like this with a badge like this on the side? If you live on the south side, you probably have. But there's a lot of things that could be deceiving about them. One of them would be the word state police on the back. These are not actually state police troopers, but to a stranded motorist, well, they're an even more welcome sight. M515 chest break. The state police motor assistance program may be new to the peninsula, but these safety patrollers are already making a big impact, helping 20 to 30 stranded motorists every day. It's just enjoyable working with the people out here helping them, I and you get a lot of good positive feedback from them which is enjoyable too. They cruise the interstates from Williamsburg to the bridge tunnels, looking for anyone who might need their help. This man broke a hose, no problem. Okay, I carry some water. Mm -hmm. I can put some water in. Now the next exit's down here about one mile, Jefferson okay. Avenue, are you yeah, familiar yeah. with the area? Yeah, I know that. Each of these specially loaded vehicles has almost anything a stranded motorist might need. I carry a couple water jugs of water for people that overheat. Of course, carry flares, another safety feature. It's just like a trooper. He, he How about these features? A battery cable plug that in plugs right. into the front of the patroller's car, long enough to offer a charge that 20 feet away, 
or a gas siphon that pumps straight from the patroller's tank up to two free gallons of fuel. Of course, this is in the person's tank that's run out of gas. Cut the valve on, and this pump actually pumps the fuel right out of my cruiser. All of the services here are free. Motorists and state police alike are delighted with this new program. That's a lot of our time uh, taken off the um, enforcement of um, traffic uh, laws and assisting uh, the public. You like having them here? Oh, we love having them here. Thank you. All right, have a good day. Thank you very much. All right. Now, again, these cars may be new to the peninsula, but they've been in Richmond since 1989 and on the south side since 1991. So if you're in trouble, these are the guys to look for. Back to you. Good deal. Thanks. Steve Kearns reporting live tonight from Hampton. Well, coming up, we had a brief taste of spring, but now the big chill has descended on Hampton Roads with temperatures dipping below freezing. We'll tell you what impact that's having on some of our area's popular crops. Plus, this trade show in New York is giving people long looks at things they usually aren't allowed to ogle. <laughs> but first, contact 10. How do you want your tax money spent? Getting rid of the car tax or giving more money for school construction? The General Assembly is debating it, and we want to hear from you after the break. We'll take your calls. Contact 10 tonight. The car tax battle. What's more important, Governor Gilmore's car tax cut or more money for school construction? That is the battle in the General Assembly. We want to know what you think. Our contact lines are open. Let's go straight to the phones. First, Jim in Chesapeake. Hi, Jim. Hello. What do you think about all this? I think it's a crock of mess. Why is that? Because uh, this lottery money is supposed to be going to schools. A lot of real estate tax money is supposed to be going to schools. Plus, the state's been overcharging people with over 100,000 miles on a car more personal property tax than they're supposed to be. So what do you think they ought to do? Fund the car tax? I think they ought to get rid of the car tax. Okay. Uh, Jim, right. thanks for your call. All right, also in Chesapeake, we have Teresa. Uh, yes, I think that uh, it should be for schools. I think, you know, we need a car tax. You know, delete it, yeah, but we need schools, period. We need more schools. Okay. Teresa, thanks for your call. Let's go to Maggie in Norfolk. Hi, Maggie. Hello. Hi. I, like, I mean, I, I know we need a lot of schools, but I think they should take some of this tax money and fix these roads out here with all these bumps in them. Hmm. All right. Well, as Andy said, uh, the Senate uh, is expected to defeat this bill, and it'll all go to conference committee where they will hash it out. We'll all let right. you know what happens. All, all right. right. Thanks to all called. Sports is coming your way in a few minutes, but first, what's up? Well, you can call them skivvies, briefs, panties, and even <laughs> body fashions, but don't call them underwear, at least not at the Intimate Apparel Week trade show in New York. Ooh. Well, they've got everything from comfortable cotton and black patent leather <laughs> to maternity body suits and bras with potpourri in them. Organizers say this is the place where you can walk around and look at everyone's innerwear without getting <laughs> into trouble. Bras with potpourri. Well, still ahead, our 5.30 sports report. Portsmouth is teeing up a new golf course, and guess who was on hand for the grand opening? The story is next in sports. When a big story breaks, time is of the essence. You can count on Chopper 10 to bring you pictures no one else can. And it's time now for our 5.30 sports report, and joining us once again is TV10 Sports Director Bruce Rader. Bruce, I understand there's a new golf course I have to check out. <laughs> That's right, Les. <laughs> you know, with a small thanks to Tiger Woods, the sport of golf is in the middle of a popularity explosion. With so many new players taking up the game, new facilities can't open quickly enough. But the city of Portsmouth is doing its part to keep up with the man. Today, Portsmouth showed off the new links at City Park, and TV10's Chris Reckling was there. The city of Portsmouth rolled out the green carpet today to show off the newly renovated links at City Park. This nine-hole course that runs along the Elizabeth River was originally founded in 1922 by Jerome Carr. Now, thanks to a nine-month renovation, it is a top-of-the-line facility that is following a national trend. It just shows that you know, you know, they're putting uh, you know some uh, some money where the, the golf is needed, and uh, I think it's great for the for the young people and the people even older that are starting the game. It's a it's a, it's a great facility. For a facility like this to be within the confines of the inner city, which is so accessible to our office parks, will certainly attract new businesses to Portsmouth. So it's a real historic day for us. <laughs> A few hundred golf fans braved the cold weather to see Portsmouth Mayor James W. Hawley hit with two-time U.S. Open champion Curtis Strange. 
Looking on was local golf legend Chandler Harper and Curtis's golf coach at Princess Anne High School, Leo Anthony. Well, I haven't seen uh, Coach Anthony in, in, in years, so it's always good to see him. And, of course, Mr. Harper I talked to and Ace Parker. And, you know, we've got a lot of big, big people in this area we're proud of. We've recently uh, started work at the Battery Golf Course, you know, a total rebuilding of that facility, and uh, expect that to be finished in the October-November time frame. I think the quality that you see out here is what you see at the uh, Battery. As Portsmouth City Manager Ronald Massey said, the links at City Park is a quality statement for the city of Portsmouth, and it opens tomorrow at 8 a.m. In Portsmouth, Chris Reckler reporting for TV 10 Sports. Thanks, Chris. Looks great. Coming up next on Wavy News 10 at 6, Norfolk basketball star Joe Smith talks about his new start with the Philadelphia 76ers. I'm Bruce Rader. Don't go away. Kind of a cold day for golf, but it looks like a great course. I know Andy Giles will do a great job. Yes, I'm sure. Okay, thanks, Bruce. Cold. Yeah. That's it. Just plain cold. Feels like back home in Detroit. I got my long johns on today. <laughs> That's a little more information than we needed, but... <laughs> <laughs> a lot more. And we'll talk about the fact that it's going to get colder and something else, too, in just a couple of minutes. Local teens learning to identify and avoid dangerous situations. Alvita is live in the newsroom with what's coming up on Wavy TV tonight. Charles and Les in just a few minutes on Wavy News 10 at 6. They see it on the streets, in school, at home and on TV. Violence is difficult to escape in modern society, but here in Hampton Roads, there is help. Kids who refuse to become victims learn to live in the midst of chaos. And here's what's coming up on NBC Nightly News at 6.30. Tonight, it's a con game, and older Americans are getting ripped off. The pitch, write a check. You win big. The catch, there's no prize money. You can't afford to miss this fleecing of America. I'm Tom Brokaw. Watch NBC Nightly News tonight. Also tonight, children with holes in their hearts. It's a birth defect that affects one in every 100 newborns. Now, medical breakthrough is bringing new hope, repairing the damage without open heart surgery on Wavy News 10 tonight at 11. Stick around. It all starts right here at 6. We will see you then. Okay. Thanks, Alveda. Well, what more can we say? It's cold. Yeah. That's it. Sums <laughs> it up. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Good night.